Welcome friends to today's exciting video where I have a new TV box sporting some new hardware running on the latest Android 10 operating system. This is the all-new T95 TV box. This model carries a new all-winner CPU called the H616 and it is also running on the high-performance Mali G31 GPU. Many of you have been emailing me about this box, seeking information on what improvements Allwinner has introduced to their line, after a dismal performance in 2019 and in my last H96 mini video. So what are your expectations this time around? Stay tuned, and let's find out. Featured in today's video, is the wireless mini touchpad keyboard from Yagala. For only $14, take control of your TV box with a full QWERTY keyboard, dual finger trackpad, rechargeable battery, air mouse features, navigation bar buttons, a direction pad, and media player controls, all in an ergonomic design with multicolor backlit keys. See it in action in today's video, or see the link in the description area for more information. Welcome back. This is the black box it comes in. And to the front it says that it's a 64-bit HEVC quad-core 6K UHD TV box. And to the back it says that it's the 4GB 64GB model. This is the box the mini touchpad keyboard comes in, and without further ado, I will do a quick unboxing. In the box you have the usual stuff. You have the TV box itself. An infrared remote control. One HDMI cable. A 5 volts 2 amps power adapter. And a user's manual. This is what you get in the box of the mini touchpad keyboard. You get the keyboard itself. A micro USB charging cable. A USB dongle stored in the battery compartment. And a user's manual. And now a look at its design and ports. The body is made entirely of plastic, with a glossy surface, and the T95 logo printed to the top. To the rear you have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one audio video port, and a DC power input jack. To one side you have two USB 2.0 ports, and a microSD card reader. To the other side is blank. To the front you have an LED clock display. And below the box you have lots of ventilation holes. I will now connect it to a 4K TV and capture card and continue. So the box is connected. And as I initiate the first boot up process, I am greeted by a boot up animation for a few seconds. Then you are taken directly to the launcher with no quick startup wizard. The launcher adopts a new layout never seen before, consisting of these large main buttons that cannot be changed, and a shortcuts bar to the side similar to the B-Link launcher. To the left you have three vertical buttons consisting of a home button, an apps button, and a settings button. To the bottom of the screen you have a one-click cleanup button, and an easy uninstall app button. Navigation and status bars are not included in this launcher, so I will install the menu button app and snowball app as alternatives and see if they work in a moment. Features of this firmware include 4K display resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz Mouse pointer settings and HDR display settings There are no Dolby Vision setting, root switch option, CEC settings, hardware monitor feature, or Dolby and DTS audio output settings. The operating system is Android TV OS, so it uses the Android TV version of the Google Play Store. In the apps section pre-installed is the Chrome browser, a file manager, Firefox browser, Miracast receiver, Netflix, the Android TV version of the Aptoid App Store, KD Player, the Google Play Store, and YouTube. I will now install some additional apps needed for my review. So I've installed all my apps, and I had to sideload most of them because they cannot be found on the Android TV version of the Google Play Store. So first, I will check to see if the box is rooted. The Root Checker app shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 10 operating system. I see that the developer of this app is yet to fix the issue where every operating system is tagged with Oreo at the end. But rest assured, the operating system is Android 10Q. This box is running on the Android TV version of the operating system, so I will now show its DRM information. 
The T95 has Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. This is great news for some users, but it's disappointing for others, as Android TV operating system is usually accompanied by Google Widevine Level 1 with HDCP protection. This allows Netflix and other premium services to play in HD and 4K quality, which is kinda the point for using Android TV OS in the first place. And now I show its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Google Pixel 2, which I doubt very much, and the model is the Pixel 2 which is definitely incorrect. It comes with 4GB of RAM which is DDR4 memory, and this is the remainder of the storage from the 64GB after the Android installation and apps installed. The Bluetooth version here is 5.0, as indicated below here. The CPU which is the 2018 Allwinner H616, is a 64-bit Cortex-A53 quad-core CPU running up to 1.4 GHz in 32-bit mode. Below here it shows that the box has support for only 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to run only 32-bit applications. The GPU, is the Mali G31 graphics processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and open GLES version 2.0 and GPU version 3.2, which is not good for gaming in 2020. And I will touch on that later in the review. Under network, it shows that the box only has single band 2.4GHz Wi-Fi and no 5GHz support. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 10, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box is currently running between 40 to 55 degrees Celsius under normal room temperature without a cooling fan. When a cooling fan is applied, the temperature drops below 40 degrees. The box comes with codecs needed for the playback of 4K videos. And that's it for system and hardware information, and now let's take a look at its benchmarks. First I have the results from the A1 SD Bench app that measures memory and internal storage read and write speeds. The results show that the T95 has a RAM copy speed of 1953 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 153 megabytes per second and a write speed of 120. These scores are very low scores for this box, putting this box into the budget category. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. This box only has single band 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, and a LAN port of 100 megabits per second. So the results show that on both the Wi-Fi band and on the LAN port, the box was unable to hit the maximum download and upload speed of my internet package of 100 megabits per second. Both connections fell below averaging around 68% of the maximum speed. This is not very good for a box in 2020. Next, I show the results of the Antutu benchmark. The latest Antutu version 8 is compatible with this box, and the results show that the box got an Antutu score of 58,933. This is not a bad score, at least it did better than the last Allwinner box, and we will see where it places on the chart. Next is the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. The T95 got a score of 547 single-core, and 1,343 multi-core. These scores are lower than the scores in my last video. The final benchmark is the Treatymark Gamers benchmark. The T95 got a score of 4,208 in the Ice Storm Extreme test, and 406 in the Slingshot test. These are OK scores, and is slightly better than the all-winner box in my last video. The Ice Storm Extreme test says unsupported because the box is too powerful for this test, but that is inaccurate, as the box came nowhere close to maxing out that test. And that's it for the benchmarks, and let's see where it places on the chart. So after entering the scores. The T95 did better than the previous H96 Mini, holding position number 4 on the chart, as I populate the chart for the first quarter of 2020. And you can view this chart in full spreadsheet format where you can interact with it, compare scores, and do a price comparison. See the link in the description area. Moving on to its entertainment features, and I will start with alternative launchers. Due to the fact that it's running on Android TV OS, alternative launchers used on the mobile version cannot work on the TV version of the operating system. Instead, Android TV and the TV Play Store comes with its own unique alternative launchers. For this demonstration I installed the alternative launcher called the TV Launcher. 
This launcher similar to the mobile ADW Launcher 2 comes with a long click menu pop-up feature. However, it doesn't have drag and drop features. The launcher basically offers a different layout with similar functions to the stock launcher. Next I turn to screen rotation. Screen rotation to vertical portrait mode using a rotation app does not work on the Android TV operating system. So for those who value this feature, it's not compatible with this device. Moving on to its streaming features. Most important on any TV box is the ability to stream movies and TV shows from both paid and free services. Most popular among the paid services is Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. Netflix is pre-installed but it does not work. You have to install the latest version found on the Aptoid App Store, and you have to install Amazon Prime from the Play Store. The challenge with running these premium services is that most Android boxes lack the required digital rights and security clearance to show in resolutions above 480p quality. This is in relation to my rant earlier about using Android TV OS and not having the digital rights and ESN Netflix certification to play in HD and 4K quality. The picture is still very clear and watchable, but you don't get above this resolution. The T95 comes with the Android TV version of YouTube, because it's the only version that can play in 4K quality on a TV box, along with the smart YouTube TV version. So the Android TV version comes pre-installed and it plays up to 4K quality. Another popular form of entertainment on TV boxes is the playback of video stored on external storage devices. This feature is the second most demanded feature on TV boxes, as it gives the user the ability to play self-hosted videos on their TVs in 4K Ultra HD quality. However, not all boxes can do this successfully. So let's see if this is the case as I now play my list of 4K videos. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou. Please note, 
From playing these videos, I gathered that the box does not have HDR display, Dolby Vidian, or Dolby Atmos or DTS audio output. I tested these videos in the VLC player and they didn't play well at all, so it's pointless to try a 6K video. These videos only play well in the built-in video player, but not in HDR or digital audio output. I will forego the digital audio segment, as I have already indicated that the box does not have digital audio output. Instead, I will do a demonstration of the Yaw Gala wireless mini touchpad keyboard. So there you have it. If you are interested in this mini touchpad keyboard, see the link in the description area. For my final demonstration I usually play some Android games. Unfortunately that did not go as planned, as I only managed to get one game to play. The rest of games I tried just crashed upon starting, as if though they were incompatible with the operating system. The one game that I did manage to play had